Today I'll show you how to edit this 3D animation from Magnates Media. He had millions of dollars at his disposal and crowds of people lining up literally begging him to take their money. Little did Now before I get into the 3D camera stuff I'll quickly cover the masking out of image assets in Photoshop. This process of finding images online and cutting them out can take up a lot of time. A quick way to do this is select the object selection tool on the left panel and mouse over the subject or person and see if it captures the object. Or you can click on the select subject button at the top and this will also create a rough selection of the subject. You can then make some quick adjustments with the quick selection tool and if you hold down the alt key this will also delete parts of the selection that you don't want. Then right click and select and mask. Make sure the view is set to overlay, then you can have a play around with these sliders to either smoothen, feather, contrast or shift the edges. You can also use the brush tool on the left side to either add or remove parts of the image if you hold down the alt key while doing this. Try to get really fast at doing this because it's the most boring part of animation in my opinion. Once you are done scroll down to output to new layer with mask. The reason you want to do this is so you can always edit this later. If you use the eraser or brush tool without a mask then it permanently alters the image and can be very difficult to recover or go back to. Once finished you can right click this layer with the mask and export as a PNG. Next I'm going to open up a new After Effects composition and set the length to the same as the original clip. Before I continue there was a pretty cool After Effects update this week where you can view the properties of a layer on its own panel. This is similar to Premiere Pro so it's an easy transition all you have to do is select properties from the windows menu at the top. In After Effects the first step is to create a concrete animation over the safe image. To do this you can find a concrete crack texture image on Google. I set the blend mode to overlay and opacity to 30%. Then keyframe its position to jump around each frame. I then copy these position keyframes until I have about 30 of them. Then I add a black solid layer and draw an eclipse on it to create a mask. Then invert this mask and increase the feather to give it this fade into black look around the image. Using the pen tool you can easily edit the mask shape and anchor points if you need. Next I add an adjustment layer and label it concrete flicker then I'll keyframe the brightness effect to make it go up and down in brightness. I space the keyframes out a little more so it doesn't flicker too fast and I can easily copy these and paste them to make this animation go for longer. These are just quick ways to apply some basic effects. I won't spend too much time on this part since the main focus of the tutorial is on the 3D camera. Next I'll make a quick text animation using the impact regular font. I go to layer at the top and select layer styles then gradient overlay. Under the layer properties I find the gradient overlay settings and edit gradient colors to yellow and orange. I will also adjust the gradient angle to give it a slight diagonal gradient similar to Magnates Media. I will then add a yellow glow effect set to behind and adjust the settings to get a small fuzzy glow around the text. Then under the text layer I go to animate and select position. Then I'll change the position property of this animator to make it move upwards. Then I set the first end keyframe at 0% and the second keyframe at 100%. Now this will make each letter animate upwards however we want the words to do this instead. To fix this go down to advanced and change the based on options to words instead of characters. Then I add an opacity animation, set the opacity to 0% and add two end keyframes from 0 to 100%. Next I create a new null object and parent link the safe, concrete and flicker layers to the null object. When I scale the null object down I notice that the concrete texture is showing outside of the black border. To quickly fix this I draw a rectangle mask on the concrete texture layer. I then lock all the layers that are parented to the null object so I don't accidentally click and move them. Next I import all the PNG assets onto the timeline. Select all of them and enable 3D. A lot of these images still have watermarks because they're from paid websites but I recommend finding free ones for your projects. Then I'll switch the preview to two views with one of them being the top. I do this so I can see the layers in 3D space or more specifically Z space. In other words I can look at the scene from above and reposition all the layers at different locations and distances from the camera. Then I add a new camera which I can now see on the top view. To keep things simple I won't add null objects yet and there are still a couple of layers missing but these can always be added later. 
better so it's not a big deal. I quickly add the same money falling footage from the last tutorial and using the key light effect key out the green background. Right now I'm going to focus on setting up the scene. This is where things get tricky and takes a lot of trial and error to get the scene looking right. And in some ways it's even more tricky trying to copy what someone else has made because I have to guess the layer's position in 3D space. But when you're doing your own animation you don't have to worry about this because you get to choose what your scene setup looks like. What I do is select each layer and using the top view drag the layers one by one away from the camera. I can select the blue arrow on the top view and drag the layer back. The goal here is to put a sizable distance between each layer and stagger the layers to the left or right of the center using the red arrow. Imagine looking at a road from above, you want to put layers in both the left and right lanes and the majority of the center line should be clear. This is where the camera will move through. Some layers like the two hands exchanging money can be in the center. You don't have to follow these guidelines, it's just an example of how you could do it. Each scene setup will depend on the images you use. Now as I'm moving the layers back I also reposition them and scale them if needed. The best way to do this is move the camera to which layers you want to preview so you can see what it looks like in the active camera view. Also make sure to enable motion blur on all the layers. Another trick I can show you to make this process easier and potentially save a lot of time is to change the camera settings. If you go to layer at the top and select camera settings you can change the focal length which makes the view big or smaller. By default it was set to 35mm and when I change it to 15mm it shortens it and the preview starts to look better. But when I change it to 50mm the depth of the camera view is quite large and starts to look really cluttered with a lot more layers crammed into view. So I change it to 20 or 24 millimeters and it starts to look really close to what we want. Play around and get familiar with doing this. It can take a long time to set up a scene like this with many layers but I recommend moving the camera up and down the Z axis and reposition and rescale each layer until you are happy with it. There's a few things I needed to add to the composition. I create a new text layer using the script font and add a glow and gradient overlay angled across it. Another thing I go back and do is wherever I see images or layers with a hard edge I draw a quick mask and increase the feather to blend the edge a bit more. Once my scene is set up I keyframe the camera's position from a null object that the camera is parented to. I also play around with the depth of field setting and only really use this towards the end where the aperture starts at zero and goes all the way up in value. I also keyframe the focus distance to make sure it stays with the text at the end. I also add a couple of extra camera position keyframes and play around in the graph view so I get a slow moving at the start, speeding up in the middle and then slowing down at the end. You can play around with the velocity graph to get something similar. Another thing I went back and added was a couple of position and opacity keyframes to three of the hand holding cache layers at the start to make them move up and fade in from the bottom while the camera moves back. This is similar to what Magnates Media did and is a good example of going one step further with the animation by animating individual layers at the same time as the camera animates. And you can create some cool looking scenes this way.
and here's my final edit. He had millions of dollars at his disposal and crowds of people lining up, literally begging him to take their money. Little did Obviously it's not perfect, I had to quickly find and mask the images since that can take a lot of time and the point of the video was the 3D camera stuff. As you probably know, Magnates Media has a team of editors and in fact he most likely has separate people doing asset collection, sound design, script, research and editing. Take this tweet from James Janney as an example. He outsourced an asset hunting only job. So it's clearly a lot of work and most of these creators outsource each stage of the process. So don't be put off by this. It's time consuming but also rewarding if you learn all these skills yourself and maybe one day you can be in a position to outsource some of your work too. A few of you have asked for full video breakdowns but for one person that would take months and hundreds of hours to do. I can try and make them longer but just know that it'll take a lot longer to produce. Let me know below if this was useful and anything else you'd like to see. And what would help is if you mentioned a specific clip for me to look at as opposed to a creator in general. Thanks for watching, see you next time.